Hi, my name is Jason Buffington. I'm Vice President of Market Strategy in the Office of CTO at Veeam. For the next 17 or 18 minutes or so, we're going to talk about partnering against ransomware. Uh, one of my roles at Veeam is we run a lot of independent research on what do customers and partners want in data protection. Now, in a broader sense around data protection, it's important to recognize that the traditional value-added reseller and distributor, the traditional partner, plays a huge role both before and after the sale. And we can see here there's some chart data around evaluation of new uh, products and services, recommending those options. You are still that trusted advisor before the transaction. But I think it's really interesting as data protection becomes more and more complex that the partner is also being sought for, for please monitor my solution, make sure it stays running correctly. Please make sure, help me get those backup jobs going. Let's make sure the deployment of the solution deployments continue to move forward and patched and maintained and monitored. So in general, the VAR distributor plays a huge role in data protection. But today we're going to specifically talk about it in terms of ransomware. So why does ransomware get so much focus and emphasis um, in the IT data protection space in 2023? One of the largest independent research projects of its kind, 4,200 organizations around 28 countries around the world, all surveyed what were the causes of IT outages that occurred over the prior year, or two years, excuse me, and then also what was the most impactful Outage. And you can see here that while cyber is the top of the list, fire, flood, hurricane, bad hard drive, bad patch, bad user, right? There's all kinds of reasons why stuff still breaks. That said, the number one cause of outages, most common, and for three years in a row, most impactful is a cyber event. And so that's what we're going to talk about today is how do we mitigate that in partnership between VAR, distributor, uh, uh, managed service provider, and me. So to get into that and talk about this, the first thing we should point out is, unlike most of the other kinds of major crises, you know, fire or hurricane or tornado, those are if. Unfortunately, ransomware is a when. One of the other points of the data from that 4,200 respondents was how many times have you been hit by ransomware over the last 12 months? And unfortunately, that little green box on the left-hand side says only 15% of respondents said they did not get hit in calendar 2022. 15% said no. And unfortunately, that means if you look at the rest of the chart, 85% said they got hit at least one time. Now, the news gets worse. You can see there's a bell curve of the number of folks in orange that got hit once or twice or three times. Those in the reds get hit four or more times. Think about that for a second. In fact, if you add up uh, the four or more, so 11 plus five is 16 plus one is 17, write this down. More organizations believe they got hit quarterly than on the green side didn't get hit at all. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine being in your quarterly um, business review with your leadership team? And just like people and manpower and profits and everything else, let's talk about our quarterly ransomware hit. Right? That's the problem statement that we're dealing with today. But wait, the news gets worse. Now that we know that ransomware is a when, not an if, Let's take a look at how that's going to actually land. On average, organizations said that when they got hit by ransomware, or maybe perhaps a better way of saying is each time they got hit by ransomware, on average, organizations said about 45% of the production data set, nearly half of the data was affected by the cyber event. But wait, it gets worse. Right. When organizations were then asked, how much of the affected data could you get back? They could get back about two thirds. So if you could get back two thirds of the 45 percent that got hit, organizations should kind of plan on losing about 15 percent of their production data. Now, it is absolutely important at this point. I remind folks this was unbiased data, not being customers um, that uh, that suffered these calamities. And so the question is, what can we Veeam and our partner ecosystem, what can we do to help customers beat these odds to lose less data? 
to be able to recover more of what they lost. How do we solve for that? And so what I'd like to do is spend, again, in this case, about 12 more minutes around four different kinds of partnering opportunities against ransomware. The first area that I bring up is, is that there's a huge amount of expertise um, that's required here. There's expertise in crisis management. There's expertise in business continuity. There's expertise required in disaster recovery. By the way, we always say BC slash DR. Those are two different disciplines. One is around keeping the organization running. The other is about recovering IT systems. Don't confuse those. And then there's cyber resiliency, which is a macro over BC and DR that also includes um, uh, prevention as well as remediation along the way. The problem with all of this expertise is that in most organizations, folks aren't talking to each other. Right. So, in fact, one of the questions was actually in the ransomware trends report, by the way, QR code in the upper right hand corner. This was of twelve hundred organizations that got hit in 2022, encompassing nearly 2,800 cyber events, because on average, they get hit about two and a half times per year, right? And when organizations were asked, how aligned is the backup team, let's call them remediation, with the cyber team, let's call them prevention, 60% of respondents said that those two teams, the interaction between them either needs a significant improvement or a complete overhaul. By the way, the ransomware research actually surveyed four different personas, including CISOs and SEC pros and backup folks and IT ops folks. Interestingly enough, the personas closer to the problem were the ones least satisfied with how well the teams are working together. Now, the reason I call this a reseller or partner opportunity is because admittedly, it's amazing how many times I walk into an organization and these teams don't know who each other are. But their trusted partner works with each and every one of them. And so just to be that that lightning rod, that galvanizing force to bring them all to the table to talk about, you also talk to each other and we're here to help is a huge value opportunity for partners. The partner opportunity also holds true um, for those data protection as a service providers. In this case, from our data protection as a service report, one of the questions was what kinds of expertise and services are provided by their managed service providers that consume data protection as a service. Now, the top three are in blue, and those are really what I think of as the more tactical side. It's the same stuff we talked about in that very first slide. Um, monitoring the jobs to make sure they're working. Capacity planning to make sure you don't outgrow space. Ensuring the architecture is right to ensure backup works. And that's tactical, and you got to do that first. But once you know that your backup is solved, for lack of a better word, and well-managed, then we can get into really where expertise unlocks new capabilities or agility for the customer. Things like BCDR planning, BCDR documentation, scripting, being there when everything goes bad. Right. So there's a huge opportunity, I think, for partners in bringing expertise and collecting the expertise that is diverse across organizations along the way. So that's that first opportunity. The second one I want to talk about, though, is simply just the foundational operational assistance with making sure you got copies of your stuff, making sure you're protected, right? Now, one of the other lessons learned from the ransomware research report was, do you have a plan? Actually, do you have a team? Does the team have a plan? What's in the plan, right? And I love the fact that only 2% of the respondents said they don't have a team. Only 3% said the team doesn't have a plan. And of the other 95% of organizations that have a cyber team, they have a cyber plan. What are the top two things in that plan? Good backups, right? Do you have multiple copies? So you can revert back to previous points in time. Do you have a method for ensuring those copies are clean? And have you tested them? Right. Have you confirmed that the backups actually are restore a bull? Right. The top two things in most cyber resiliency teams is having good backups along the way. Now, that's not free. Right. It doesn't happen automatically. And so there is a requirement around monitoring and expertise. And how can you as the partner be part of the process in helping the customer ensure they have reliable, clean, verifiable backups? Let's lean back into as a service for a minute. For those organizations that are asking about as a service, it's interesting. We've seen a major shift where not only do organizations want their data out of the building and in a cloud, 
They want it in a managed cloud. Why? Because they don't want to manage it. Right. In fact, you see here, there's a shift. Only half of organizations, barely under half, actually, really want, OK, I want to put my data in a cloud, but I still want to run it. Right. Um, 31 percent say, no, I really want the service provider to do it. And there's, and there's the, the middle area. Uh, so you got chocolate on one side, vanilla on the other. One in four folks still want swirl. I don't get it. Just make up your mind. Anyway, the whole idea is um, we're seeing a major shift. In fact, a year ago when this question was asked, it was only 13 percent wanted an MSP. Now it's 31, right? Major shift towards if I'm going to use the cloud for data protection, I don't want to be half in. I want them to manage it as well so that I get a better outcome. And that's true not just for protecting on-prem workloads as well. In a different survey around cloud protection trends, organizations were asked, who's backing up your clouds? Right. M365 is the pinnacle example here. And in this case, what we see is that on the left-hand side, the data center team is, is, uh, that does backups for the rest of the on-prem environment are also the ones backing up M365. Lower left-hand corner in one in four organizations, the M365 admin is backing up themselves. And I kind of like that idea, too, because honestly, if M365 is unavailable, they're the first ones to get the call. And there is roughly a roughly two to one ratio between when the traditional backup team does the backups versus when the application owner does it. And that's a good sign of maturity within the IT space. Almost always new workload comes out, new workload owner has to do the backups. Over time, it get commoditized, more well understood, the backup team takes it over. And yet, when a managed service provider is involved, in one in four cases, they take over all the backups of one cloud protecting another cloud. And I think that makes sense. So again, the partner opportunity here is helping the customer ensure that smart folks are, are assuring that backups are currently happening and they're running well. By the way, you also need to assure that you can recover from crises at scale, which is much different than I have one workload or one data set that has a problem. When I have to do it at scale, there's a whole other level of complexity that is both expertise and time based such as how often do i document uh, or update my documentation how often do i test requires time requires expertise best done by a partner right on average by the way uh, organizations update their testing and or their documentation about every five months twice a year that becomes an engageable model when you actually have to recover itself organizations were asked how do you recover at scale how do you actually fail over only 18 percent of organizations use orchestrated workflow. Now at Veeam, that breaks our heart, right? Because we have this whole product called Veeam Recovery Orchestrator. We also have a network of DRAS providers. There's lots of better ways to do it than manual connectivity. There's lots of better ways to do it that don't expire instead of predefined scripts, right? If you're using one of those, they are hugely laborious, right? You're gonna need a partner. How do you get out of that? You programmatize it, you script it, you put it into workflows. How do you do that? You get smart people to help do it for you. You need a partner, right? So there's lots of different ways where the partner comes in and should be part of the process of ensuring that you have adequate protection. The other side of that is when something goes bad, who are you going to call? Right? So how do we do um, uh, recoveries at scale? When organizations were asked about ransomware and specifics, they were asked, what kinds of third parties did you bring in as part of your remediation effort? And two in five ransomware victims last year brought in a partner. They brought in their reseller. They brought in their service provider. It's that little orange wedge on an otherwise blue field. The reason they do that is because who else knows their environment as well as they do? Their partner. Yo. Right. So when we need extra hands on deck, when we need extra people to help get stuff running again because they've suffered a crisis, admittedly, hurricane, forest fire, tornado, theft, all fits the same way. But in this case, ransomware, you need extra people on deck. You need people to know your stuff. Partner, two out of five. The other reason this becomes so important is because if you don't do this, if you don't bring in extra team members to help mitigate and recover from this um, from this disaster, then you get to fall on this chart. Now, this chart actually asked organizations, again, from those 1,200 cyber attacks, how long did it take to get back up? 
right? Now, the stat here will actually tell you the chart's kind of busy, but the bottom line is, on average, 3.4 weeks. 3.4 weeks from when you started to recover until you said the crisis was over. Now, there's two problems with this. One, we said earlier, on average, organizations get hit about 2.3 times per year, right? So can you imagine for those folks that are getting hit quarterly, and now you're taking nearly a month each time out of your quarter to do the recovery, right? That's not a sustainable model, it's not a survivable model. But there's a little there's a little asterisk on that left-hand side, it's actually an underline, that says three weeks to recover after triage, All right? What that means is, you know, when you, when you try to recover from a fire, you know which servers to recover. They're the crispy ones, right? You want to recover from a flood? Recover the servers that have water dripping out of the chassis. But with cyber, do you know which servers are infected? Or do you have to triage them first? Right? Which ones have toxic stuff still in them, malware, that you still have to scrub before you can bring them back online again? Guess what? That's labor intensive. Guess what? It requires expertise. It's partner. So lots of partnering opportunities around the core team during the recovery itself. And then lastly, I just point you to an advisor in preparedness. And maybe that leans a little bit more into the strategy elements from above and ensuring the ability to protect so that you can recover. So this last one's kind of a catch-all on understanding, does the customer environment have the technologies necessary? Are they prepared when everything else goes bad? As an example, one of the key ways that cyber villains make their money is because they remove your option to save yourself, right? Imagine um, uh, someone has pushed you overboard on a boat in the middle of the water. If you could swim back to the boat, you're good. You can grab something floating in the water, you're good. The cyber villain's job is to sell you a life preserver. How do I do that? I make sure that you can't save yourself. Let's pull up the ladder. Let's make sure there's nothing else floating. Let's get rid of your backups. Because if you don't have backups, then you have no other option than to pay the ransom. In 93% or more of cases, the backup repository is directly effect is targeted by the bad actor. And in fact, in 75% of cases, they got it. They remove the backup repository so that you have no choice than to pay because you can't restore yourself. Well, if that's a common technique and you are an advisor in preparedness, what can you do for your customers to help ensure that they have survival repositories that the bad actor can't get? All right, so in this case, this data point actually comes from lessons learned of where do former victims now recover or protect their data to? Four out of five have at least one cloud service that's immutable. Right. Two out of three have at least one um, on-prem disk solution that's immutable. In 2023, tape still matters even more than ever, not just compliance, but also in air gapping as well. Well, how do those technologies get deployed? How do those backup solutions get assessed? Right? How do they understand this is something that's worth doing? Their trusted partner, their advisor, right? Lastly, how do we ensure clean restores? Right. Fifty six percent of organizations, the way they restore is just get it back online as quick as you can. Well, if you have not triage to make sure there's no infection, you're going to reinfect the environment on the way. Right. That requires some advising that requires some expertise. And then lastly, I guess I was off by one. Lastly, where are you going to recover to? Whether it's fire, flood or cyber, where are you going to recover to if the original metal is not there? Recovering to cloud is really, really agile and really, really quick. Not always obvious. You're going to need expertise. That's where partners come in. All right, so lots of things that um, areas where the partner can really add unique value um, in prevention uh, and mitigation around ransomware. And I guess here's your homework. Three things to start off when you're asking your own teams. One, are you engaged across all the customer teams necessary for them to be cyber resilient? The business continuity and crisis management team, the IT disaster recovery team, IT ops, backup, legal, et cetera. Secondly, how ingrained are you in both the protection processes and the teams necessary for remediation, right? That's going to talk about pillars two and three. And then lastly, 
are you assessing for each of your customer environments what they are for mutability, work streams, restorability, recoverability, two different things. Almost all the charts that you saw here are available in this report. You can download it from the QR code above. I hope this gives you some new ideas of how to partner against ransomware. I'm Jason Buffington for Veeam. Thanks for watching.